Hey everybody, and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program RP0. We're out on the launch pad today. Yay! Uh, this is a uh, updated RA9, uh, and capped off with our uh, universal rover named uh, Charlie. For it was my third iteration at uh, that build attempt, and uh, he's going to Venus. And uh, our inclination with the moon is approaching something uh, relatively acceptable. So we're just going to go ahead and uh, light this candle. So the ignition sequence start. And we're lit. We'll get the clamps off. Oh, that was an interesting little shutter. But uh, we are off the pad and going. Thank goodness. So, um, oh, I really should have looked in on the rover. But it looks like our uh, my attempt to... Uh, uh, reroute the part uh, so that we have a man pod facing up has worked. Uh, I no longer have to switch to a, a different uh, avionics unit because the one on the rover is facing straight off to the side. That makes for some very uh, interesting choices by SAS in how to balance the craft. Oh, I should probably start this gravity turn. And uh, there's a shimmy that's becoming all too familiar with launches lately. I guess. Uh, Vehicles are becoming a little too top heavy. Oh man, we're off by a degree. That's alright. I guess I'm gonna have to pay attention to this flight path and stop my incessant rambling, so I will pick up all of you in orbit. It's been a good long while since I got to fly an RA9, and uh, I guess it just all comes back very quickly. And uh, even with these uh, upgraded E1s on the boosters, this thing just still sails. It, uh, it absolutely still is my most favoritest rocket to fly ever, considering how long I built it. Well, go, I built it. It's kind of a wonder. Unfortunately, though, I uh, did not check my staging. Well, sh dang it! I did not check my staging, and we have fired the fairings just a little too early. But uh, I think, given our altitude, we should be okay. I hope. But. Um, I don't know, I guess we'll find out. So, we'll, we'll just uh, keep right on trucking. Yeah, see, right about now is when I'd be normally firing the fairings, so hopefully this is just uh, not a big deal. And uh, we can proceed with the flight as normal. I hope. The uh, rest of the launch uh, went relatively smoothly. Uh, nothing really screwed up. I just had to uh, remember to lock the tank up there on the transfer slash brake capture the disposal fuel tank there at the top with the engine facing the wrong way because we're actually uh, entirely facing the wrong way but you know no big deal um, this is the part where I'm actually uh, just leaning back from the keyboard and just watching it go when I say this thing is easy to sail it, it really is you just point it in the direction uh, near that we want to go and I mean I've launched this thing so many times just knowing the angle is uh, down pat at this point uh, I did shoot a little high. Uh, I blame those uh, E1s, uh, the E1 advanced, and I, I did not write a boot sequence for the uh, orbiter section, but uh, we got that taken care of. Our comms are deployed, and our uh, dish is focused on Earth, and there goes stage set. We're now on our three uh, RL-10 upper stage. The uh, core will, of course, fall back to Earth and hopefully land on no one. I doubt it'll even survive. It's going plenty, plenty fast enough, but uh, we really only have to burn about a kilometer per second, maybe a little bit more out of this stage to uh, circularize. I use the term circularize very, very loosely, but uh, our orbit should be something approaching round. I hope. And there is orbit, uh, 278 by uh, 164. Uh, not the greatest, but it'll do. We've got uh, 3,800 meters per second left in our liquid hydrogen stage, and then of course we've got this uh, AJ-10. Uh, I guess that's our transfer stage, and also our deorbit stage and our uh, correction burn stage. It's uh, a multi-purpose thing. Venus set as target, and we can get rid of uh, Rendezvous Planner and bring up Maneuver Planner. Thank you, Mech Jeb. We would like to uh, bring up our pork chop selection, please. Or we'll just uh, let it compute. There we go. Um, no, 
pork chop. There we go. ASAP. Departure in 12 days, huh? That's, uh... Man. <laughs> I was lied to twice. Uh, I came out and plotted a node with the spacecraft already in orbit, and it told me uh, about 11 or 12 days before what Curl Alarm Clock told me was the optimal node. Yeah, that, it's the same thing. All right, well... Uh, let me see if I can't just get a node for today. Create node. When does that tell us to leave? Five days. It'll take uh, 3,400 meters per second. We're not going to sit in orbit for five days. Uh, I would like to do this uh, now because we have liquid hydrogen boiling off. So I'm just going to click this button a whole lot of times and then adjust the node as necessary. So give me just a couple minutes here. I'll bring you right back. So this is the part where I kind of wish MechJeb had a right now feature that would just uh, plot the node to uh, rendezvous with the target uh, immediately, or at least uh, in the next uh, approximation on the orbit, because it just seems silly that the difference between the Delta V figures that uh, MechJeb was reporting to me and the Delta V figures that I came out with after plotting this node were not all that different. Um, I was maybe looking an extra hundred or so meters per second to plot this burn, but uh, just doing it one click would have been so much more convenient. All right, there we have it. We'll just uh, go get our spacecraft back. It's uh, 3,487 meters per second, and we will be departing in one hour and three minutes. Much to my liking, that is well within our uh, budget here. Uh, we will be ditching this stage after that burn, despite the fact that it'll have a little bit less, in, or a little bit left in it, and hopefully we will be uh, within range or uh, on a collision course with uh, Venus, which is awesome, because that means we'll have all of this to spare to make uh, the inevitable correction, because I'm going to miss. As per usual, but you know, these things do happen. So, all right, we'll just uh, get ourselves set up here on the node. There we go, and hit the time warp. Oh man, hopefully we'll have a connection. I did turn on yeah, I turned on the comms. Yeah, we just don't have a connection a lot of time here in uh, low Earth orbit because reasons. Alright, we can put Mechjev away. Our electric charge is depleting, but that probably has a lot to do with this core down here, and we will be rid of it in just a couple of minutes. So this is telling us our burn time is 7 minutes 44 seconds. I don't think that's accurate, given our delta V figures here. And uh, Mechjev is telling us that we can displace uh, 3.5 kilometers per second in 5 minutes 22 seconds. I'm assuming this burn is actually going to be closer to 5 minutes solid. So we're just going to warp a little bit more and get to about the two and a half minute mark, maybe two minutes 40, and then we will uh, step up our game and light these engines. Oh, right about here, that's good. All right, start to ullage these things in. Very unstable, risky, very stable. Ignition, fantastic. Now, so long as our periapsis doesn't drop below uh, 140 here. Oh, it's already rising. We're in good shape. We are not going to be skimming across Earth's atmosphere. That is fantastic. And you know what? We might as well just uh, lay on the thrusters and burn off some of this aerozine. We're not going to be needing it. What do you think? Is that a winner? That's almost a winner. A 
I'll take it for now. So far, so good. Just, um, we do have a little bit more fuel than the allotted runtime on these RL10s, which is 7 minutes 50 seconds. I think we left the ground with 8 minutes and 4 seconds of fuel. So uh, I'm hoping that the... It was to compensate for boil-off, mostly, but I... Uh, we could be pushing them past their runtime. My initial gut reaction was to deactivate the center engine and start this burn on two engines, and if one of them failed, reignite the center and then turn off both uh, outside engines or outboard engines. But um, I didn't think the risk was all that high, all things considered, so we'll just have to see how this goes. This is kind of an untested uh, upper stage configuration. Uh, it's it's basically just a shortened version of the HV upper stage that's flown on the RA9 about a hundred million times with uh, three engines instead of four. Uh, other than that, it is the exact same thing. So, while this configuration is untested, all the parts on it are. So, I, here's hoping. And uh, you'll notice I'm not using physics time warp. It's because I am overly concerned with the wheels inside of this bay. And, oh yeah, I do have solar panels. Look at me go. Let's go ahead and get these out. Because I forgot to write a boot sequence for our uh, transfer part here, but that will definitely help uh, mitigate the draw of our uh, core down here. Where the two RTGs that are on uh, Rover Charlie himself will provide more than enough power to power this whole thing. Uh, in theory, I actually never tested for that. We can put you away, Maneuver Planner. And uh, if you're worried about this gap here, uh, I am too. <laughs> there was initially a shroud on the heat shield, but it made uh, construction a little weird, and I was getting a, a very terrible oscillation, and as soon as I removed the shroud, it stopped. So I, I don't know what's up with that. It was just a, an artifact of something else, but um, sorry about the uh, completely imaginary gap in here. <laughs> That's my explanation. It's my excuse, and I'm sticking to it. All right. Uh, we are 40-some-odd seconds past the node with another two minutes to go on our burn time, so we need to uh, lighten our load a little bit and speed this up. So I'm just going to lean on the H key and try to get things moving along. And the uh, kind of nice part about uh, interplanetary burns is once you're pointing at the node, and or if you decide that you don't want to lean on the H key, you can pretty much just uh, press go and let most of it happen all on its own. Uh, these are the ones I tend to pay attention to all the way through, unlike most uh, launch stages. So it went pretty smooth. I'm more or less happy. Yeah, well, we're within about uh, 2.8 meters per second, which is a huge deal uh, from this far away. Well, um, we do have 4 seconds and 85 meters per second for runtime left in our RL10s. Yeah, nothing great. <laughs> uh, it, it really seems like we're just so close. Yeah, look at that. Okay, let's uh, replot the node. We're just uh, a couple of minutes from now, and... Okay, there we go. Add maneuver. Thank you for letting me plot a node. I do appreciate it, Kerbal Space Program. It's fantastic when you're just so nice to me. Nope, other way. Looks like I overshot. There it is. Venus, focus. Oh boy, this should be fun. All right, well, that looks like it's going to be about the best we can get for right now. It is uh, 22.3 meters per second. That should be uh, doable. All right, we've got plenty of thruster fuel left. So in the interest of accuracy, I'm going to shut down our two outboard engines. OK, 
get ourselves a little bit lined up here. And we'll uh, just time warp a little bit. I need, sorry, I wanted to watch Earth fall away, but I need to see the counter, and Earth isn't just entirely too bright. Okay, we're within 10 seconds. Oh, there's a little bit of a jump. Let's ullage. Very stable ignition. It's a good light. Ooh, overshot 1.6 meters per second. What did that get us, though? All right, all right. we're on uh, a fairly decent course. It's nothing really to shake a stick at. I'll take it. All right, how's our electric charge looking? We are charging. Even with that ridiculous core attached to us, we are seeing a net positive. And uh, that's with most panels kind of in the way-ish, perhaps. But I think it is time to ditch our uh, RL10 stage. We'll just uh, inch it in here. And hopefully this won't throw our course off too much, but uh, decouple. Decunk. And we're free. And we'll just uh, turn this on and see if we can't... Oop. Yeah, I forgot. Up is down. Down is up. We'll pull that away. Very good. And let's see about uh, control from here. Boink. Yep, that switches us around. Fantastic. All right, well, we're on course. This is uh, a very good sign so far. Now we just need to uh, plot a correction node, but I will do that all off camera and uh, not bore you with uh, the silly details of bouncing things around and all that other nice stuff. So there's a good picture today. Man, oh, it's so pretty. <laughs> That's going to do it for this episode, everybody. Thank you so much for hanging out. I do appreciate it. We've got uh, one more launch heading for Venus, and then we're uh, back onto the Mars stuff. So um, I guess I'll see you all in the next episode. Until then, see you later.